Hi everyone and welcome to another workshop on container gardening. So today we are going to start planting some uh, vegetables in containers. During this period of COVID uh, we all noticed that we are all depending on food and why, what's bet better to grow our own food. So today we'll be looking in how we can grow our own food in our small spaces like a patios or terraces that we have and use a small containers. For this project we need containers, we need landscape fabric, a trowel or any digging device, a pair of scissors, labels and a sharpie to write down which vegetables are we growing, seeds or seedlings. Okay so I have a seedling of lettuce in here and these are cabbages that I planted a few weeks ago and we if we will be planting some arugula radishes uh, cilantro very hot weather um, spinach preparing for the fall and as well as chinese cabbage ready for the fall and as well peas and beets so. okay so Let's start with containers. Oh, so containers could be anything. Could range from these small ones, um, nice uh, potting, flowering pots that we can get from garden centers, or you can go a bit more serious if you want to grow more vegetables. If you don't have this, you also may have something like this, a tote lying around that you can use and if it's not that the case perhaps a wellington boot that you have around or a broken watering can all of that is, we can grow vegetables on that or may also may have seen on, on online um, milk jars as well there you can use those all those can be used as long as they have drainage holes this is very very important because we don't want the water standing in here. When you water, you want the water to ex the excess of water to drain. All right, so we are going to focus on that. Okay, so let's start. Containers. Containers need to be between six and eight inches for small containers. For instance, if you are interested in grow growing herbs uh, or growing some radishes, <coughs> Uh, let's here. So here we have this container has seven inches, and um, this container is a bit eight inches deep. And if I want, for instance, in this container, I would like to make uh, grow beans, peas, or even potatoes. I can grow in here, so they will range with be a bit deeper, like 14. 12 to 14 inches deep okay so this is 11 inches deep all right so that's one and the other is the diameter we really need that small pot at least six inches in diameter or nine inches let's turn around so you can see it better nine inches in diameter all right so and this big big container i have several in here this big container is 16 inches diameter. The way to use something that has no holes like uh, this tote. Well, yes, you need holes in here. You need to drill holes at least uh, one quarter uh, inch diameter as big as this has to be drilled in here. Um, because this container, the moment you add water, the water will stand in here and remember plants need oxygen and the oxygen is in the soil so plants will be drowned if you don't make holes and the water doesn't drain okay 
so this is with containers very much a uh, large variety of them um, since we be growing in terraces and patios you we need to prevent that the soil drains out from these draining holes so for that we are going to use landscape fabric you can get this from the dollar store it's just a clear transparent fabric and you will just use your pot as a as a template and you will cut around and later you will just fit inside and this you will fill this with soil all right let's let's start with soil all right so <clears throat> You can use any type of soil. However, because we are going to grow in terraces and patios and you would like to carry, to lift your container from one spot to the next, it shouldn't be too heavy. So we have in here gardening soil. It is very dense, very heavy. All right. So if you fill this, in, you use this soil, to fill these containers, the containers are going to be very, very heavy. Okay? Does it matter what kind of soil you use? It does matter. For instance, this garden soil, uh, gardening soil has more nutrients and will last longer. If we use potting soil, okay, this is potting soil, lighter, and it has nutrients around six months. So after six months, you need to replace with new soil or mix with garden soil or add some compost in order to uh, re replenish the nutrients in the soil. All right. So you got your gardening soil. So the next step is to, to make it wet because this gardening soil comes, this gardening soil is it's very dry, so we need to moist it. So, uh, see if we can. This is very fluffy. Okay, so I will going to put some gardening soil in here. So, gardening soil, very fluffy. Okay, this is, this soil is man-made. It's a blend of moss, mushrooms, manure, compost, and you can see these little white things. These are perlite or vermiculite, a type of clay that absorbs lots of water. And also you may see here some small little I would say spheres these are slow release fertilizer so it has fertilizer in here okay so this soil should be moisted before adding into the compo into the containers and for that you use your watering can you are very generous So here we have added soil to make this to moist this soil a bit more. Add water for making this. We have added water to moist the soil, and you can use your bare hands, or you can get a pair of gloves and you mix all together, or you can use your trowel and mix it. As an advice, moist your soil first before in the containers what could happen is that sometimes the soil is very dry you fill the containers you put your seeds and later you water and all the, the soil just comes up bubbles and all your seeds 
are gone and then you have to redo it all right so let's moist the soil first Uh, how wet um um should how wet it should be is like um if i just grab it and water doesn't for instance this is kind of okay water drains freely if i just make a but remember i haven't mixed completely so as long as when you take a handful and we squeeze no water drains that will be a good consistency kind of um if like you're making crumble this has to be crumbly uh, like a chocolate cake texture yeah yeah all right so um, let's start i have a couple of volunteers in here if they can help me cutting some masking fabric for this container we can plant this one and we can plant um, this one so we just have added some lining to the bottom of our containers to, in order to prevent that the soil comes through these draining holes so we have this pot nice to this container ready to plant the same with this okay shouldn't be perfect just yes, okay and this one as well we have nice masque fabric covering the holes so the next step will be just to fill the okay this makes nice and okay so nice in there okay all right you fill up to the brim of the pot and where you are happy with that you just will thump it against the ground or the floor and the soil settles Welcome back. So we have <coughs> finished filling these containers with nice potting soil and we are ready to plant. So the question is, can we plant anything? Well, no really. For these big pots and these big containers, we can plant vegetables that give us fruits such as potatoes for this big one, tomatoes, peas, beans, and eggplant will work very well but it's only one plant and these also big containers we can make have a combination of plants such as uh, broccoli cauliflower and cabbage surrounded by lettuces or spinach or radishes um, i won't advise in here planting carrots carrots they really need deep is deep enough but um i never try carrots so don't don't try it <laughs> one thing that one of the vegetables i won't use growing pots one of the vegetables i won't grow in pots is carrots all right so leaf vegetables we have arugula spinach cabbage swiss chard mustard greens beets beet remember beets if you are going to plant for the leaves you can plant very densely but if you are interested in the root you plant sparsely and keeping a space in between plants and beets don't grow in the ground like a carrot they tend to pop up above the ground the same is with radishes all right 
So at Embark, we use the square foot gardening. At Embark, we use the square foot gardening approach. So we have this is a square foot garden, a square foot, this is a square foot, and we can plant coated. So the red circles yeah, as, is for a small plants, kind of radishes, 16 in a square. So in here, fits nice. 16 radishes will go in here. And here the same. You can see that's big containers. 16 radishes. And we can plant nine beets if I'm interested on the bulb, or 16 beets if I'm interested on the leaves. I will plant nine spinaches. Uh, I will put one, two, three, four lettuces and one big cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower because those plants become very, very big. And if I'm interested in planting potatoes, I will put two potato seeds in this container. All right. And that is a different process about planting potatoes because you will only fill one third of the container. Put your potato seeds and as the plant sprouts, and the leaves grows, you keep topping up with soil. Okay, the more, the deeper the potatoes are, the more potatoes you will have. All right, so. Could you put more than one type of veggie in one in a pot, or you just do one type? Can we put more than one type of vegetable in, the, in this container? Yes. If this is a big container like this, I will, in this one, because it's one square foot, I will put two vegetables. As here, like uh, I will can plant this cabbage and surrounded by radishes, all right? Or I can put in here a broccoli, perhaps this nice lettuce, and at the back I can plant some cilantro because the cilantro has shallow roots and it will grow tall. The broccoli or cabbage has deep roots and is slowly growing and the radishes will be the first one, I mean the lettuces will be the first one I will be harvesting. So it's just try to see which ones uh, will you will harvest first and the longer ones you leave it for later. So sharing the space and optimizing your space. You don't want to fill all this just with one plant. Try to optimize two or three plants if you are into herbs uh, as well you can mix this uh, with herbs, uh, so any type of herbs like a, here, rosemary, sage, big container, they are perennials, mint, and over here we can put dill, fennel, and also in here we can put oregano, uh, thyme, basil, so all these herbs that grow, all, most of the herbs grow nice in containers, even, uh, yeah, so, Let's plant in here, as I mentioned, this beautiful cabbage. So that's how it comes from all. So don't be afraid, just split in half. Now you have your cabbage in there. And we are going to make a, a spot here in the middle deep enough so all from this first leaf all the way down so all this is under uh, under is planted um usually if you leave just at this level this plant is going to grow and the root system is going to be very weak so at one point it will just topple okay so deep enough from cabbages broccoli cauliflower roots will grow from the from the main stem okay so let's plant in here all right, so nice. Okay. Let's put this aside. Okay, so let's continue with this planting. This one, so lettuces. I got this lettuce. Okay, so I don't know if you can see. But this is more than one plant. We have in here one, two, three, four plants. All right, so we need to split them. Again, if you just use your fingers and being careful, you can separate them because they are root bound. 
so and there we can make sure that okay so we have one beautiful lettuce we can put here so we can put four lettuces in this one two are there some plants that we cannot put together yes there is and um, that we have what we call the uh, companion planting companion planting if you do a quick research online you will have uh, a list of plants that they don't grow together they kind of they are no good companions uh, so you shouldn't be planting together yeah um so in this combination we have uh so in in this container lettuce four lettuces and one cabbage we will eat in this first before the cabbage uses the wall space all right so container we are going to plant peas because we are heading to fall and the best is to plant some peas so these are sugar and peas peas okay so it's to have fresh yam pots we're interested on in that um again using the square foot gardening we can see that is like a one foot square foot in diameter so we can plant nine peas in a square so um now also peas like to have a structure they can climb and help themselves to to be standing up so thinking on that perhaps we can use some bamboo, bamboo canes to put make a tipping kind of like that three or four bamboo canes and they are making a, a tipping and i will plant the beans the peas along the rim okay so here is a question how deep okay as a as a rule of thumb any seed shouldn't be deeper than your fingernail okay no full finger because the seed will run out of energy if you put so deep the seed will run out of energy before surfacing and being able to make its own food using sunlight so so here we have some seeds of peas all right so if i say one fingernail is you can see this the size of my fingernail so i will plant a bit deeper perhaps more well, first knuckle yeah so let's see first knuckle one so 16 sorry eight one two three four five six seven and eight okay and in each spot i will put two seeds so that's very nice Ooh. when you are planting you empty some of the seeds in your hand don't try to pick from the from the container because could be happen that everything ends up you end up spilling all over and once the seeds get moist they will start germinating so okay so yep oh no here all right peace we just rub it covering them we make a label okay so we write this and today is the 29 7 2000 and we have label in there it's good to know to write the the date because most of the seeds should uh, germinate between seven and ten days if by the 15 days it haven't germinated plant it again don't wait uh, particularly with the spinach carrots radishes if it doesn't germinate in seven days means that the seeds were not viable plant it again if you really want to give it a, a time for the seed to germinate 15 days will be the max i will give as a time and if after 15 days nothing germinates plant again okay 
right in this small container in this small container i would like to plant some spinach and perhaps because i like guacamole cilantro all right um so uh now if i use my square foot gardening approach you will see that it's almost one is a big hand half of the square so will be if i'm a square i plant nine spinaches here we put just four so again i will just put one two three four and perhaps in the middle i will put the cilantro okay so make sure that your hands are dry when you are dealing with seeds so the seeds don't get moist so i have a spinach in here empty some seeds on your hand this put aside so it doesn't spill over and you have to collect your seeds so two seeds in each spot two four six eight that's it why we use two seeds and not only one these seeds were packed for this year 2020 so it means that all of the seeds will germinate so 100 percent they will germinate if i'm using seeds from the last year i will use two seeds if i'm using seeds from three years ago i will use three to four seeds because some of the seeds won't germinate they will will be dead so since we cannot guess which seeds is alive or which seeds is that is dead so we just gamble adding more seeds so i uh, also i uh, ensuring that um something is going to grow all right okay so for instance for um lettuce uh, i'm sorry carrots carrots are very tiny seeds and we put five seeds in each spot so it's kind of a if you have time you will count, count five seeds or you have a mini pinch and you will place all right because uh, carrot seeds not all of them are viable all right, so we have planted some nice um, spinach in there. Let's get some cilantro. Okay, now cilantro seeds, that seeds you get, okay? And these actually are pods. So in each pod, we will have five to six seeds. All right, so these are pods. Okay, so we just will again collect two pods and will be 10 seeds. So they go two pods, we cover and we label what we have planted. So um, uh, so so we have planted spinach and we planted cilantro all right so there we go our containers and the next step will be watering uh, before you water please please put your seeds away you don't want them to get wet okay very important the moment that the seed pack gets wet the seeds inside will start germinating and all this money that you have invested will be for nothing because you would just dump this so let's put this away all right the next step is watering so you get your watering can and we water the soil even when the plants are growing get used to water the soil the plants don't take water through the leaves they take water through the roots so the soil needs to be wet, wet moist not the leaves so we water the soil using our nice okay all right something here and how often do you water when there are seeds all right so you you will try to do a deep watering means that the water should be wet all this this the soil should be wet all this moist 
and we will depending on your area depending on your patio how many hours of sunlight it receives it could range between two times a week or once a week all right so and the way the best way to test if the soil needs watering is just push your finger through and you feel how deep how moist is at the end of your fingertip and if it's moist in there you will just add some, we just top it up with some water okay going back to your garden area and gardening area either patio or terrace um, usually we try to avoid sitting the pots on the ground directly because um, we are creating a nice humid environment for slugs to come and hide in there and later you are wondering what happened with my plants that are being eaten so for that I use suggest to use two pieces of wood and then you just put on top of that at the same time you are protecting the the floor the um, the floor or your balcony so there's no the plant the pots are not sitting directly on the ground so always on something that you can later throw away if they get rotten and this as well allows you to see when the water drains you can see you see is our plant is already draining with the little watering that we have done so again so we can put two pieces of, of wood in there and then you sit your pots nicely on top of that and then it's ready and you, you will water depending on the how um, how much sun your area your patio or terrassa receives once a week or twice a week and yeah and that's very much and yeah uh, I hope you have enjoyed